Hi! In this video, let's take a look at the Analogix EM860T True RMS Multimeter. I actually got this meter directly from uh, the manufacturer's uh, or distributor's website, uh, analogic.com, and uh, for about $65. So this meter, the reason I bought this meter is not because uh, it's anything special. It's just, you know, it looks cute and uh, and it's uh, you know has sorry six thousand counts, and looks reason reasonably well built. And uh, perhaps one thing really caught my eye was uh, you know on its uh, website, uh, it has the backlight on, and it's really nice and bright, which I'll show you a little bit later. So anyway, so so I bought this meter for really no apparent reason. Um, you know you can never have too many multimeters, um, and uh, so I thought. I would uh, take it for a spin and uh, to see what is uh, what is up for. Now, for comparison, I have my um, now BK Precision twenty seven zero nine B here. Now, this is really not a very fair comparison. Number one, uh, as you probably saw in Dave's video, uh, the hundred dollar meter shootout. This twenty seven zero nine B is uh, you know it's about. Uh, uh, fifty percent. I actually is about a hundred uh, and five dollars right now online. So you know, so this is roughly only half of the price, a little bit more than half of the price of uh, this meter. So this meter is a lot more expensive. Also, BK Precision is a you know relatively well known uh, company, and uh, if you have watched Dave's shootout video, you will see that uh, this meter, uh, the twenty seven zero nine B, is actually fairly well built. Um, so the only reason I use this as a comparison is because this is a sixty, uh, sorry, six thousand six hundred counts, and this is a six thousand counts, and they have some re relatively, uh, you know, similar uh, specs. So and also people are probably more familiar with this meter. So and uh, so so that's why I'm using this to compare. Anyway, so the first thing you notice is that this meter, um, it's fairly sturdy. I mean, you know. I can. I'm actually quite impressed when I first got it. Is that uh, it was really solid. You, you know, you, you can press it. There's really no squeaky sound of anything. Whereas, like our uh, the the two set twenty seven zero nine B is, you know, you can squeeze it, and you can hear the squeaky sound, and it just doesn't feel like it's very. Uh, uh, very, you know, solidly built. And one thing annoys me the most probably uh, is that uh, this stand is really flimsy. In fact, I have broken it uh, just doing normal use. I actually, if you can see here, I'm not sure if you could. Um, I actually had to, you know, drill a hole and uh, insert some metal piece in here to actually temporarily fix it. So it's not as uh, you know, now it's not as uh, snappy as before anymore, and also it just feels like it could fall off any minute. So that's something I was actually not quite uh, impressed about as a BK Precision meter. And there are a couple of other things uh, too. Um, so actually, before I start, you know, walking you through this meter, I'll just tell you about a couple of things I don't quite like about this BK Precision 2709B. One thing is that if you noticed is uh, you know the Capacitance measurement mode is actually needs a, need you to swap the uh, the leads from uh, from your voltage measurement to the dedicated capacitance measurement and uh, current measurement mode uh, plug. So this is actually quite annoying because you know a lot of times uh, uh, you're you're just do, you know testing your components and you really are just switching between the uh, the uh, resistance, voltage, and uh, you know diode and the capacitance, and you really don't want to you know unnecessarily swapping the lead all the time. And it's not number one; it's very inefficient. Number two is you could leave the lead in the wrong uh, you know in the wrong input, and uh, you know could potentially do some damage. E even though this one does uh, uh, you know tell you if you were in the uh, wrong selection range. But it doesn't prevent you is that once you are in uh, let's say in the uh, capacitance mode, right? You know you can you are still in the microamp range, so you could still be poking your uh, leads into something, 
that is potentially going to cause damage to your meter. So anyway, so that was a, another, th uh, another thing I don't quite like about this meter. Uh, the third thing perhaps is a very annoying, in my opinion, uh, is that uh, while this meter is a pretty well built and while it's, everything is in spec, uh, if you do voltage measurement, for example, the forward and backward voltage, what I mean is, uh, for example, uh, let me just grab my uh, voltage measurement here, the voltage uh, standard I built. Um, the actual voltage doesn't really matter. We're just trying to use it as a relatively stable source, right? So if we measure, so this is forward, you, you can see it's 10.00 on a dot, right? So if we reverse the polarity here, and it will say it's 9.98, uh, which is definitely still within spec. But the problem of this is that, uh, you know, when you are using the same meter, uh, to measure voltage, you expect that the forward and the backward uh, either polarity obtain the same result, okay? So even if they're, you know, they're with, within range, uh, within spec, uh, when, when it doesn't give you the same reading, it just doesn't instill a lot of confidence. And so this is probably one of the biggest problems I have with, with the VK Precision. 2709. But otherwise, it's a fabulous uh, little meter. It, um, you know, it's a has a very nice range switch. I really like it, and you can easily operate it with one hand. And uh, uh, yes, the sound is a little bit annoying, but I don't know why a lot of the meters, including this one, as you will see, uh, have this uh, annoying sound when you turn it on and off. I mean, turn it on, switching ranges. So that's something, you know, I can live with. But um, uh, anyway, so it does have its uh, shortcomings. Since this is not a review about this 2709, I will stop right there. And uh, let's take, start taking a look at this uh, uh, EM860T. So the meter itself came in this uh, uh, big, white, non-descriptive box. It uh, has an uh, uh logo on it. And, uh, you know, there, there's really nothing special about it. So, probably it's not a, uh, you know, it's just re-stamped it for whatever brand underneath this meter is, which we'll probably be able to find out. And uh, then you have this uh, nice uh, little carry case, which I really like. You know, it's uh, uh, probably not as useful as, uh, you know, uh, it's not as useful, but it's definitely more useful than the, the attachment belt some of the meters have. And then you have this uh, thermocouple, which is, uh, you know, leads, which is uh, pretty stiff and uh, doesn't have the standard thermocouple connector, but uh, hey, it gets the job done. So let's move on to this meter. And uh, as I mentioned, this is a 6600 uh, count meter, so it should give a reasonable... Uh, accuracy and uh, uh, its update rate is rated at three times a second which is actually faster than BK Precision uh, 2709. As you can see if I just turn it on and yes uh, uh, well if I move it to the millivolts range you'll see the, uh, the number jumping around which is quite normal but you can see how fast it updates so that definitely is a plus. So now actually speaking of turning on and off, one thing I noticed, I'm not sure you can see here, uh, is that when you turn it off, you know, the, the screen doesn't shut down immediately. There's some, uh, let me just move closer, and you know, there's some leftover sticking for a while. So turn it on, turn it down, the same thing. Uh, all the segments lit up first, and if you turn it off, you see that? On again, off again. I mean, th this just looks like, uh, I don't know, this doesn't look very professional, in my opinion. I mean, you know, as a pro professional meter, you turn it on, right? So as soon as it turned off, look, there's nothing happening on the screen. So, and most of people doing reviews for the multimeters uh, will tend to, you know, try the different specs and different, uh, uh, you know, voltage and current measurement. Uh, you know, 
I, I'm probably not going to do a lot of that. The reason is uh, most meter, if it's coming from a trustworthy uh, source, we, we, we'll give it the benefit of doubt to say that uh, you know we trust its uh, specification, everything is uh, in spec. We just want to take a look at how it behaves and what are some of the advantages of this meter you can find. Uh, then, you know, say the BK Precision 2709C, uh, 09B rather. Okay, so the first thing I wanted to show you is that uh, um, the claimed uh, display is, you know, it, there, there are a lot of good reviews of this meter actually. Uh, if you go on Amazon, you can read about it. Uh, one of the things people like about it is uh, saying that the display is nice and clear. And it is nice and clear. Um, the only thing is that um, um, it's probably better, I would say, than a lot of the meters, but it's not really the best. Um, particularly if you, for example, the angle is towards the top, right? You can see here, and you really can't see anything on the meter. And if the angle is too flat, and you ended up uh, seeing, you know, again, not to be able to see the actual uh, letters. Uh, the numbers rather uh, so but but it's actually on par with the BK precision largely so if a BK precision for example um, you know again from the top it's probably slightly better than that meter but from the bottom again you know you can't really see much so that makes me wonder why the heck we can't design a meter that um, uh, with a nice uh, you know display I mean I have this old uh, craftsman meter I'll show you here I know there's an, you know, this meter is really just a standard uh, three and a half digit meter, but look at the display. I mean, it's gorgeous. So you can change all different angles and you know, it never fades. So clearly it's possible to, to, to manufacture a, uh, uh, a nice LCD like this, but I just don't know why most of the meters nowadays except for the fact like unit he meters uh, you know they, they they just don't have this kind of a good LCD display anymore anyway so one of the features I do like this uh, Pisano Logic EM860T uh, meter is that uh, it has pretty nice backlight uh, if, if I'm not sure how well the backlight could show uh, would show up on the uh, this uh, camera but you know it's really nice and bright so actually it, uh, in person is much better than this so basically you can see really clearly um, you know like yeah so it's pretty much like that um, so it's nice and bright whereas a lot of the meters like this one for example you know yes you can see it but hey it's uh, just not as nice looking um, a lot of people do complain that, uh, you know, this meter uh, it only lights up for about uh, 10 to 15 seconds. I actually, I measured it was uh, 15, uh, 15 seconds. That uh, it might not be enough if you're working in the dark and things like that. I mean, as far as I am concerned, I it doesn't really bother me. Uh, you know, I rarely get to use this uh, uh, backlight. And so, and then when I do use it, it's really something, you know, something fast. I, number one, I don't leave the backlight on for, uh, for, you know, for extended period of time because it drains battery and also it's not necessary most of the time. So let, let's start with a couple of uh, uh, measurement between these two meters and you will see some differences and uh, I will t I will, I'm going to walk you through that. Uh, some of the features actually I find it uh, better on this uh, meter. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is trying to measure a uh, white, uh, white LED. And uh, the reason for that is uh, LEDs are, you know, white LEDs have uh, higher forward drop voltage. So not all meters can light it up and uh, and so a lot of meters have trouble testing this. Okay, hang on. So let me uh, point this towards the camera so you can see. Okay, so this uh, BK Precision, you know, yes, you can light it up, but um, it's not showing any forward uh, voltage drop. And uh, which is actually, you know, I'm actually kind of surprised. But that said, it's not uncommon. But for this, uh, for this uh, EM860T, 
as you will see here. I'm going to change it to uh, uh, diode. Okay. As you will see here, um, yes. Oh, that's the wrong way. And it also lights it up and up. At the same time, it shows the uh, forward drop voltage. Look at that. So actually, that's uh, quite nice. And the speed was reasonably fast too. Well, speaking of speed, uh, the next thing is, you know, we will see how the continuity buzzer works, right? So while we are still on this range, uh, actually let's uh, change it back to the continuity. While still on this range, uh, we will try the continuity. I mean, this one, you can see. So, it's fast enough, but it's a little bit sluggish. Uh, I mean, by my standard, because I really like, uh, this is where the BK Precision one, I really like, you know, BK Precision one, it's just fast. I mean, this is as fast as uh, the ones without latching. And this one is pretty fast, but, but occasionally, you know, if you do it too fast, it does miss, miss a few. And also it's a little bit of, uh, how, how can I say this? It lasts a little bit longer, the beep, if you know what I mean. So, so it's not as snappy as this BK Precision, but it's definitely uh, better than a lot of the, uh, the multimeters out there. And uh, uh, the next thing I want to test is uh, let's uh, do a capacitor test. And the reason for that is, you know, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this one you have to switch ranges, I mean switch the input lead, and which is quite annoying. This one, on the other hand, we can simply just uh, um, Come here and, uh, you know, with the leads in the same position, we can measure capacitance. So this one is a uh, uh, 0 0.02 microfarad, so would be showing as 20 some nano, okay? So that's not a problem at all. And uh, let's show it on this BK Precision. Uh, okay, BK Precision. So let's see here. No problem at all. And the speed is comparable, this two, I would say. So now let's um, um, take a look at the larger capacitor. And one of the problems a lot of the uh, multimeters have, even though they are rated to be able to do, let's say, 60 uh, millifarad, which is uh, about 66,000 uh, microfarad. Anyway, so they are able to do, you know, to measure that large capacitance, but in reality, uh, you know, a lot of the meters can't. So, for example, I have a, um, I have a, let's say, I have this uh, ten thousand microfarad uh, uh, capacitor here, and it uh, has been discharged. I verified it earlier, and now let's see how we uh, measure this. I mean, how how the two meters do. So first I will try the BK Precision. And uh, I know it doesn't work because I actually try to do it m many times. So for instance, uh, let me just get this. Uh, here we go. And as you will see the meter, it, it's attempting, now it's uh, charging it, right? It's charging or discharging, discharging. And it just cycles through, it doesn't really measure anything. Perhaps the only thing I can tell is that right before it discharges, it shows a 10.27 something. So I'm not sure what's going on there. So basically it just enters the cycle. And I see a lot of uh, uh, capacitors having these issues with this meter. So I'm not sure if there was a design flaw or something. But again, it's quite uh, normal. A lot of the meters, I mean, not just, uh, uh, not just a BK Precision. Even some of the, uh, the the fluke and some of the uh, uh, better meters uh, all have similar issues. Okay, so clearly I can't measure this uh, capacitor. Now let's try this uh, uh, analogic one. And uh, now again, I'm trying to yeah, right now I'm still in the capacitance range. So now I'm gonna do it. Okay, it takes a sweet time, and it does take a long time. But at least it shows 11.03, okay? I mean, the actual, you know, measurement probably is not that important, but it does give you some, you know, like a reading here. 
and so I would say a clear winner here even though it's slower and it may not be as accurate but hey you know this is between you can measure or you cannot measure so this one actually I think is definitely better here okay so now let's take a look at measuring of resistance and uh, resistance wise uh, you will see that um, uh, I mean I like the BK precision one oh, whoops see that's what I mean it, it's just annoying you have to now switch this back okay so right here I have a 1.25k, 1% resistor, and let's measure that with a BK precision first. So let's take a look. And it's one, uh, it's 1.246, which is uh, definitely within its uh, tolerance range. And you notice how fast this meter is. And that's one thing I like about the uh, BK precision. Uh, 2709. So now let's take a look at measuring the same uh, resistor with this uh, uh, EM860T. So now I change it back to the resistance mode. Uh, look at that. Actually, this is a very slow uh, compared to uh, the BK precision. Watch how, how long does it take to change the range. So anyway, so let's take a look at the actual resistance measurement. And it's a 1.249. So uh, as far as the, uh, the accuracy is concerned, is no, there's no problem. But it does seem a little sluggish, uh, especially for... Uh, so the auto, chain, auto ranging for the resistance mode is actually not that fast, uh, which is okay. Uh, it's definitely... Uh, not the slowest amount of meters I've seen, but uh, certainly it's not as snappy as the, uh, the BK2709. Another thing worth noticing is that, let me turn this off first, uh, worth noticing is that uh, the Ano Logix meter has a uh, temperature measurement mode. So you can, you know, switch it on there and it will show us right now it's uh, 21 in the lab uh, Celsius, it's 70 uh, Fahrenheit. So even though it doesn't give you, you know, a decimal reading, but it's kind of, uh, you know, like in a ballpark, uh, it definitely is nice to, to know the uh, environment's temperature. Also, you can use the uh, thermocouple that is uh, supplied to measure uh, temperatures. I'm not going to show it here because it's just uh, another measurement. Now, this one also has a dedicated uh, uh, milliamp uh, microamp and amp range, uh, which unlike the uh, BK Precision, if you you know put your meter in the wrong, uh, for, for instance, if right now I'm in amp range, I put in, uh, obviously if I put in amp range is fine, but if I put, put back in you know other range, it doesn't give you a warning. So that's something clearly not as good as uh, BK Precision as you know you could uh, forget about which range you were in and accidentally started probing, let's say ohm, oh well ohm is fine in this case, but uh, say if you were in a meter, uh, in a voltage range, you could automatically start probing voltage while it was still in the current uh, socket, which would definitely damage uh, the meter. Well, it may, may not damage, but it would certainly blow the fuse. So that is not as uh, you know good as uh, uh, the BK precision, but nevertheless, um, you really need to check double and double check your range before doing any measurement anyway, because this is just a you know just to warn you, and uh, uh, even if you are you know, you could have just left it in in the in the amp range, right? And uh, you know, so there's. Did you see that? I actually caused an error here. Wow. Hang on, let me try that again. That is not very... Wow. Okay. So I'm not sure if that's just a... How did I do that? It seems to be just a... Huh. Very interesting. Well, that certainly doesn't... Uh... Well, now it doesn't... Now I can't... Can't get it to do that anymore. 
that certainly doesn't uh, give you a lot of confidence. Well, let's move on. And uh, hmm, I'll have to check why the heck that was. Uh, what the heck was going on there? And anyway, so it's always good to have good uh, habit to to double check your range before you proceed any to any measurements. Because one area that the this uh, EM 860T I think is better than the uh, BK Precision 2709B is that in its minivolt range it has slightly better resolution. I'll show you what I mean. So here I have my voltage standard. Uh, I'm running out of the lab space here, so I started putting things on the side. But anyway, the lab uh, this voltage standard right now is set to six millivolt, six millivolts. Okay. So now we want to see what the reading is on the meter. So I have this two alligator clips here, and let's just uh, clip them on. Okay. And it shows nothing. The reason is uh, why? Oh, I'm on volts. Okay, so now if I change to millivolts, it shows me 5.99. Okay, so if I use my BK precision, uh, I have to cycle it through the range, and now it's millivolts. Okay, so now let's see what it says. Now, this one measures 6.0. So, even though both are in the millivolts range, uh, even though both are 60, uh, 6,000 counts meters, actually the BK precision is 6,600 counts, but in this uh, particular situation, the BK precision actually has less uh, precision than the EM's A60T. So before I proceed to the uh, the take up uh, to the uh, teardown, let's take a look at uh, one last thing. Uh, of course, there are so many things I could try, but uh, let's try a, a milliamp reading. Uh, the reason I want to do that is I have my uh, the, this. Uh, current standard here. So let's uh, change it to microamp. Okay. Microamp. And this is a uh, 100 microamp. Uh, oops. Ah. Yeah, so this is a, well, okay. So now it stands there. So this is a 100 microamp. Let's see. So Yep, this way we measure uh, exactly spot on. And uh, so let's re reverse it. Minus 99.5, did you see that? So that's that's the reason that, uh, uh, you know, this, uh, uh, I think I mentioned earlier about this BK precision, is that you cannot get a consistent reading from forward and to backward, okay? So even though it's within, it's, uh, uh, I think it's 5%, uh, I, don't quote me, I think it's a 0.5% range, it's just about uh, there, uh, or 1% for that matter. Even though it's within this error range uh, margin, it still doesn't give you a lot of confidence because, just because, you know, uh, the relative reading is different for the same current, okay? So now let's take a look at... Um, Take a look at uh, this uh, analogic one. So microamp. Okay. So I put it here, and let's take a look. Okay. So we first measure this uh, forward, 99.8. So it's definitely within uh, its margin. Let's measure the other way around. It's minus 99.8. So no problem. So yeah. So uh, definitely, you know, this, in my opinion, is better than uh, BK Precision's way of uh, displaying the results, as is, at least, for better or for worse, is consistent. So, besides the uh, the little uh, uh, glitch we had, I'm, now I cannot reproduce it. If you recall, that glitch we had was when we were trying to switch between ranges. I don't know where my... Um, I can't remember exactly what the sequence was, but we actually got this uh, error message displayed on the uh, meter. So not sure, not entirely sure what went on. But besides that, um, 
everything seems to be pretty good uh, on this meter and I certainly can't complain about its uh, voltage and uh, uh, you know all the other measurements except probably the only thing I don't quite like is this uh, ohm range which is a little bit on the slow side but uh, that's quite understandable now let's uh, take it apart and see what's inside so for that I need to first remove the uh, the leads which I did already and we need to remove this uh, uh, rubber holster which actually it's quite clever how they did this uh, if you see they have this uh, you know made it very tightly um, so basically it looks as if it's one piece but uh, you can easily peel this away. Um, you will see what I mean here. Okay, so you can easily peel this away, and uh, the whole thing comes out pretty nicely. So that's definitely a good design uh, decision there. So now let's. Uh, uh, I'm not sure where. To, oh boy, uh, this clearly needs some. Uh, could be done better. Uh, I don't like this at all. Anyway, so let's first remove the, uh, the battery compartment, okay? Mm. So, actually, uh, this is quite nice. This is actually uh, threaded uh, instead of the self-tappers. that's the uh, battery compartment so let me temporarily remove that so we can proceed to uh, removing the remaining screws um, I think I need to remove all the four here all four okay so now all the four screws are removed uh, let's see how we, how do we open this oh boy this is a little bit tight uh, seems to me that um, it should be open, open this way. Okay, I think I, we can. It's just very tight for some reason. Uh, hopefully I don't break this. Uh, all right, so let me... Oh, okay, Get, getting there. Getting there. Uh, I can see this already. Okay. There. Wow. Something just fell. Oh, okay. So that's uh, huh. That that is interesting. I'm not sure if you saw what if it just fell. So there is a uh, on the back of this uh, back cover. There's something that uh, looks like it's a switch, right? Yeah, it looks like you know it's a kind of like a rubber uh, switch that. Uh, um, you can see it from here, but if you look at the board, there's nothing there. So this one mates right onto this area, which there's no traces. So that clearly is not a button. So I'm not sure what the heck that one was there for. Anyway, so now we're inside and we can take a look at um, uh, its construction. Uh, let me move it closer. So the first thing you noticed is this uh, chip here. It seems that the whole logic of this multimeter is based on the single chip. And um, if I can read it, um, I think this is a DTN 06, uh, 0660L, okay? So if I remember correctly, uh, that would be the same IC uh, as the ones used in a lot of uh, multimeters. For example, uh, if I remember correctly, that was used in a uh, Uni-T 139C and um, also I believe it's uh, in TechPower TP440. In fact, now I'm 
looking at this, this looks exactly the same as the uh, um, as the Tech Power TP40. I'm wondering if that's somehow both are just rebadged uh, product, probably presumably made by the same manufacturer and rebadged. Now the first uh, another thing that you see immediately is that uh, uh, the switch here and uh, some headers. Now this one says Cal, so if it's turned this way, you enter uh, the uh, calibration mode. And uh, let's see what else we can find here. Here is a uh, EEPROM. Uh, it is 24C02A. So I believe that's a uh, two kilobyte EEPROM. And uh, so that's actually all there is to it. And uh, what we have here looks like a, uh, oh, that looks like a linear regulator. Wow, that is a linear regulator. Hang on, let's, uh, let's probe this. Let me uh, put it on. See what the heck is going on here. To see what's going on here. Okay. So now let's uh, turn it on. All right. So let me grab my other, uh, the BK Precision meter. Okay. So we'll let set this to voltage mode. And we want it to probe. Um, let's start probing this. So that's a regulator. Uh, Okay, so it's a three volt regulator. So what is happening, seems to me, is that the entire circuit is actually powered by three volts via this uh, uh, linear regulator. Let me just probe one more time. So the side should be input. Yep, so 8.87, that's our battery going in. And now we are outputting three volts, okay? So the whole thing could, wow. So they're using a nine volt battery to power the, uh, to down convert to three volts to power the rest of the, uh, the circuit, which is interesting. Um, just to make sure, let's check this uh, EEPROM to see the supply voltage. So I think this, yep. Sure enough, it's three volts. So, yep, so that's how they're doing it. So potentially, uh, it depends on how the rest of the circuit works, we can actually, uh, let's turn it off first. We can actually, you know, use this battery. This ba battery can probably drop to very low voltage before uh, this whole thing stops working because, you know, this is a three volt regulator. So we have a large margin of uh, uh, the voltage here. Unfortunately, this does waste a lot of energy because, you know, it's a linear reg regulator and uh, so the same current flows through no matter what. So, I wonder why they didn't use a um, two or three, you know, like a, a standard AA battery, for example, to do that. That would be a lot, uh, save a lot of, uh, well, well, depends on uh, the preference, I guess. But that certainly would be a possibility. So um, I looked around and uh, actually I did find some uh, information about this uh, uh, chip online. And so it seems that, uh, um, as I mentioned earlier, we have uh, uh, a tech power meter and uh, Unity 139C. And also, I found another meter, meter uh, Veloman, uh, DVM4100. That meter seems to be also exactly the same uh, layout. So I wonder if that is also a rebatched meter. But uh, I, wouldn't know for be, uh, I wouldn't know that for sure unless uh, we take a look at the actual meter. So now let's uh, take this further apart and see what's on uh, the inside. I don't, I don't think we'll see much, but uh, uh, let's take a look. Oh, I didn't see any 
Oh yes, I did. I do, did. So I was gonna say I didn't see any moths or any PDCs here, but uh, I can see that they are actually. Uh, you see this thing, so they are probably soldered on the other side of the board. So let's take a look at that. So it seems to me that the whole board is just uh, held in by this one screw, as these four screws are probably for the LCD, I'm guessing. So let's take a look. Yep. Uh, okay. Wow, look at this. This is a really impressive. So because this meter is a Cat4 rated, and we can see that it has two massive, massive uh, fuses here. And these fuses are 10.3 uh, by 38, and it's IEC 269, 1000 volts, 50 kilo, kilo amps are rated. So clearly, uh, this is for uh, for it to to be able to uh, meet the Cat4 rating and Cat3 rating. The one thing I don't quite like about this is uh, if you look at the uh, if you look at this uh, banana plugs, these are really uh, well. The quality is okay, but they're they're kind of uh, you know they're soldered directly on the board. Uh, I'm not sure how clear you can see this. But um, you see this? It's just a single solder uh, point at the bottom, and that's it. So over the years, uh, you, you know, keep uh, plugging in and plug and unplug it, and you're gonna, you know, cause a lot of stress on the board, and potentially this whole thing gonna be ripped off. But I think you know they alleviated that a little bit by uh, using this. Uh, you know, if you look at the this case. Actually, once you plug in the uh, plug, uh, you know, it's pretty secure inside, so you really are not going to wiggle uh, around too much. So I suppose that's fine, but only time can tell. And uh, we and we see that um, this is a kind of like a blast shield uh, that is uh, coming through the slotted uh, area, which is right between your current rating, the current, yep, the current jacket. So clearly this adds, you know, little more protection because of, uh, you know, in the event that, uh, um, you know, this is a severely overcurrented, you will have a spark somewhere, but uh, because of these uh, protrusion, uh, that will make it a lot safer. So let's keep moving, removing this uh, this meter, and we'll see what is inside. I don't think there's any, uh, you know, many other things inside, but uh, you never know. Um, let's see. Okay, so, what's going on here, okay, oh yeah, so this, uh, okay, fair enough, yep, so that's as far as I can go because of this uh, uh, battery uh, cable here, and I think they just soldered it on afterwards, so that's why, and um, if I zoom in a little more, you will see the input protection actually is quite uh, solid. They have the MOVs, the uh, PTCs here, and uh, and if you notice, the PCBs also is pretty nicely made. They have all the ground VS all around the place. And uh, interestingly, if you l read the label here, here is a rail for you know the rail is a slash PC link link. And now this particular uh, multimeter does not have a PC link, so I wonder if they use the same, um, you know, board to to for other models. But I haven't seen any uh, analogic one uh, offering a PC link yet. So that's that makes me curious because Veloman a DVM four one zero zero that one 
the only difference between that one and this one, it seems from the outside, is that a development does offer a PC link. So I wonder if it's just some, you know, like a, a economical uh, version if a meter is, in other words, the meter is probably capable of doing that. So we'll, we can take a look later. So here is our, uh, on top of here, is our uncontact voltage sensing circuitry. So really it's nothing uh, except for this uh, antenna here. Uh, by the way, I forgot to show you, but uh, hopefully after I assemble it, I will show you uh, that this one is actually, in my opinion, not very useful because any static discharge or just a simple, uh, you know, by rubbing your finger on it, it would detect as a uh, detected voltage. So I'm not sure how accurate or, um, you know, useful that is. But uh, this does look like, uh, you know, there's not mu nothing much on this side. So now let's... Uh, reassemble it and I will show you that an NCV functionality. No problem. Uh, now I'm gonna show you that, uh, uh, sorry, NCV uh, functionality that I, I didn't show you earlier. So now if I put it in here and uh, I hit select, so watch what, what happens, okay? So if I just, uh, see, if I just touch the, uh, if I just touch it with my hand, uh, then it goes off. So which means it's very sensitive, right? So, you know, anything, uh, yeah. So anything that uh, can generate electri uh, static electricity, it would go off. So that seems to me is overly sensitive. And now let me try grabbing a uh, the real the live power power line to see if it uh, does anything or not. So here is uh, my outlet earlier. No. Oh, it does. So okay. So 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 it's actually not that sensitive to the real. I have to put it really close, and the wire won't do it. So. So it seems like it's more sensitive to static electricity than uh, the actual uh, the 110, the 120 rather power here in the United States. So maybe these, as somebody suspected, were uh, built for the Chinese market, where the or European market, where the voltage is significantly higher at the 220 or 240. But uh, for 110, as you saw earlier, and it's not really that useful. Also, you know, given that uh, any of the like static electricity can cause it to go off, um, I, I don't think it's uh, you know that useful at all. Okay, so that pretty much uh, finished my uh, initial review of this uh, multimeter, and it does take a longer time, and uh, unfortunately. And now I saw, of course, I forgot this piece, and I have to open it up again to put this uh, uh, back in, even though this one serves absolutely no uh, no function at all. But, uh, so overall, this meter, I think it's a relatively good, um, in that it uh, uh, has 6,000 counts, and also a lot of, the, some areas, actually, it does better. For example, the... Uh, uh, the millivolt range and uh, the capacitor measurement and uh, um, these features are actually better than my BK Precision 2709B. So I'm quite happy about that. 
And on the other hand, there are certain areas where, uh, you know, for example, the ohm measurement is just too slow, uh, but it's it's uh, manageable. And some other problem is, you know, there there was an intermittent uh, uh, error showing. Uh, now I, of course, cannot reproduce it, uh, no matter how I turn it. So I'm not sure what that was, but it did say uh, on the manual that uh, uh, if there were significant uh, interference from the environment, there may be some issues. So I suspect it's probably a shielding issue or just some transient from the outside. But nevertheless, it doesn't give you a lot of confidence because you should be able to trust your multimeter to, to do the measurement in those areas, especially if it is rated for uh, CAT4. And another thing, you know, you notice it keeps falling over and this uh, stand really could uh, be designed better. I don't know why they do not, they did not design it to be a locking stand. And it's, uh, you know, it's a more uh, sturdy than the BK Precision one, but uh, it's not as, uh, you know, it doesn't, just doesn't stand uh, firmly at all. So if I push it, it just falls down. So it's not very useful. But I have to say I'm very impressed at its uh, input protection. Of course, it does have some flaws, as I told, uh, mentioned earlier, that these uh, uh, recessed input jacks are just, uh, uh, in my opinion, not up to standard because you know there, there's no uh, shrouding on the top, and also there's um, it is they're just soldered on directly onto the board, so long-term re reliability is uh, another issue. Nevertheless, I think it's a very, uh, it's a very solid meter. I mean, you know, we, when, when we look at the meter, we have to consider its price, its uh, uh, specs, uh, especially this one is using the same uh, chip as uh, uh, Unit E 139C, which, uh, you know, it's another well-respected uh, uh, multimeter. So I have no doubt that uh, this meter will be able to perform to its rated specifications. And uh, um, I will take a look at uh, the chip uh, side of the thing a little more to see uh, whether or not we can uh, hack this thing to, um, or to understand this meter, how it operates a little better. So, uh, and if you like the video, please give it a big thumbs up. I will catch up with you next time.